Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another lovely scene stream. I'm Matthias, also known as Matthias, and we have a little bit, bit of a dynamic duo going on here today. It is Matthias Apostle Eitzen. How are you doing yes, today? I'm doing great. You know, <laughs> it's good to be back here behind the desk, and I'm ready to see some great Overwatch being played by our team here. Yeah, it's going to be Overwatch Collegiate Championships, and this is day two of the group stages. It's going to be St. Clair College versus Boston University, and this is looking to be a very interesting game here. It is, yeah. You know, coming into this game, I'm sure the Saints are feeling very confident as they finished. You know, they're right at the top of their group. They finished the Swiss stages 8 and 0. Uh, one of only two teams to do so, the other being Winthrop, and they are currently the first seed because uh, the teams that they faced to get that, you know, were just a little bit higher ranked than the ones Winthrop did. So, you know, right now, they're it's looking like they're at the top of their game, and I'm sure they're coming in ready to prove that. Yeah, they're riding the high right now, and they are just cruising in on through, and after that, after they face Boston University, looking ahead into the future at 3.30, we're going to have a game up against University of Missouri. That's going to be at Mizzo Esports, a well-renowned team. They're probably going to give Saints a good run for their money here today. I don't know if they will end up winning, but they will certainly give them a good game. Yeah, Mizzo definitely coming in as a bit of the underdog to that match. Uh, but, you know, they do have the potential to punch up, especially, uh, you know, if Saints maybe... Uh, I, I think there's a world where we see Saints have spent a lot of time preparing for the kind of the top teams, the big dogs in their group, uh, Arizona and Northeastern. They're a couple names that you do kind of have to look out for, maybe be a bit aware of, kind of have something going into those games to be ready for. Um, so these other teams, they do have a bit of potential to kind of, you know, pull something sneaky, right? There are teams that might get overlooked a little, and that's where they can really kind of make their mark and, you know, maybe catch Saints off guard a little bit. Yeah, for sure. There's always room for upsets, especially in the collegiate space. Sometimes you could just catch a team on a bad day or you could be having an amazing day and just throw the entire expectations out the window. But focusing in on Overwatch as a whole, what have we been seeing in the meta lately? I've been seeing a lot of Orisa being played. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's been a constant in Overwatch too, but anything new. Orisa is definitely still like the go-to pick, but it's actually been really interesting, especially in the past couple of weeks that we've seen, especially in the Overwatch Champion series. A lot of teams have actually started kind of branching out into kind of more map dependent picks. Uh, for example, like on Hollywood, on Esperanza, we are seeing a lot of Winston being played. And in the DPS line, I think we're also seeing a lot of flexibility, especially when it comes down to uh, the Sojourn versus Cast picks. We're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of opportunities for teams to kind of decide whether they want to run that long range kind of ability to open up the fights where you have the Sojourn Railgun who can get these picks at long ranges versus the Cast who really thrives once the fight has kind of already started. So if you have like a really solid tank player that excels at making space and kind of forcing out cooldowns, that kind of stuff, then the cast is really good because then you can get in there, you can just start clicking heads and you can take people down from the off angle. Whereas the Sojourn, if you have just that crack DPS player who's just insane mechanical <laughs> beast, they, they can just, they charge up the rails off the tank and then they just find the perfect angles to just pick someone off at a long range. And once that happens and the rest of the fight, it's just, it's, it's a Jenga tower. The whole thing exactly. is crumbling down. Yeah, that is crime to a T. Yeah. He is amazing on the Sojourn. And we've been seeing that a lot lately, but we've also been seeing the cast, like you said. But the one constant I've been seeing on every single team, you need somebody on Tracer just to get that DPS passive. Tracer, Tracer has, by and large, been a must pick uh, <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Like you know, even even when the tanks get swapped up, the Tracer is almost always there. If you have the monkey, the Tracer works good with it. If you have the Orisa, you're still going to want to run the Tracer. Even if you're like deciding to run a Sigma, the Tracer is so good just to like you know be able to get around on the flanks, pressure the off angles. Like, tra there's just nothing that Tracer can't really do, right? You know, e you might say, oh, Tracer, she's not ranged hero. She can't do anything at a range. But, you know, with those blinks, you yeah. can always close down the range, right? <laughs> so, it's just a super versatile hero, and that's the reason why we keep seeing her. And I'm sure, no doubt, we'll be seeing her today. Um, but I also have no doubt that the Saints players will be more than ready to be able to, you know, do their jobs uh, with those heroes, uh, especially because we, we've actually seen uh, quite a few of them get some good experience there in the Overwatch Champion Series. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Red X, Razor, Crime, Emeryn, they all played on uh, Team Dylan Stuck there and they had a great showing they made top 16 so they're coming off that and they're looking to you know bring the experience they had playing against some monstrous teams there in mm -hmm. the champion series you know looking at like toronto looking at m80 just uh, legends of the season yeah for and, sure you know the saints players they had the chance to go up against their 
and they they got the experience firsthand, and I'm excited to see what they can bring back from that and bring into this game here. Yeah, there's so much experience on the Saints roster. Just like not, I think Squeak's gonna be playing today, and he also has some great experience. But uh, Tread, like we were talking about earlier, has yeah. some of the best experience you could possibly get. Yeah, Tread is uh, he's just <laughs> been on a tear lately over in EU. Uh, he got signed onto Team Peps. He was previously on Timeless in NA for OWCS Stage One, and he or sorry, Timeless Obsidian their secondary team but he looked great there and he, his talent got him recognized he got picked up to team peps which is a very storied team long been a long time in overwatch contenders uh, a huge uh, hugely loved team especially by the french fans and he's come in there he's slotted in amazing and he's helped propel that team up to top three already and they're actually participating in their their match like as this match is also going on. So best of best of luck to Tread there in his mm -hmm. match, and of course, best of luck to our Saints as well, as I'm sure Squeak will be eager to fill the shoes that Tread is leaving for him at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Squeak has always already had so much experience with the team that the synergy that they have together just makes up for any little bit of skill diff there for that sure. goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with sure. any team that they're going to have to face today. So with all that being said, how do you think this is going to go, if you had to guess? The, the match score. I mean, Saints are definitely going to be favored. Uh, a lot of it, I think, will depend on what comps they decide to run. I think Boston will probably decide to run the Orisa just because, like we said, Orisa, she is kind of that low-hanging fruit, right? Like, mm -hmm. while not necessarily being a must-pick, like, you can run other stuff. It, it's the easiest thing to take. For sure. Like, it's low-risk, high-reward, mm -hmm. right? Whereas the others, they might offer a little bit of a higher margin of reward, but it, it's a lot higher risk. It requires a lot more kind of kind of coordination to pull off. It requires a lot more planning. So I think Boston will probably come out on the Orisa and Saints, it's going to be up to them whether they decide to mirror. I'm sure if they take the mirror, they'll be very confident as Squeak, you know, historically on that main tank. He'll have, he'll be very comfortable on the Orisa, but there's also a chance we see them decide to play the Winston, decide to play the Sigma, depending on uh, what we decide to see. And we are getting ready to go into game here, All so right. it should be seen very shortly. Yeah, I'm excited to see what map we're going to be on. Oh, it's looking to be Nepal here. This is is going to be interesting in the comp. We're seeing Squeak actually pick the Sigma. Yeah, so it does look like Butler or Boston is going to be on the Orisa comp, kind of like I said. We're going to have the uh, Symmetra probably just to get that initial kind of TP out. And yeah, the Tracer Swap comes in for the side of St. Clair, but not for Boston. Ah, there it is. A little late. But yeah, Boston coming with a very traditional, basically full meta comp. And already they're engaging each other on this midpoint here. Squeak holding the line, trying to get in on this Orisa. Ooh. But wow, Triforce with the early pick on Noxious. Yeah, Noxious going down there. That's going to give Boston an opportunity to really push forward. And that's exactly what we see. That Lucio is going to speed boost the Orisa and they push forward. Crime going to get taken out. A great job by that Lucio identifying a weak point where they can really go in and kind of just negate the advantages that you get from this poke comp running by the Saints. Now Saints, they're just going to have to try and stand back here. And first point control has gone over to Boston. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a different story than we were writing here as the Saints already have to play for the retake and I don't think that's going to plan for them as they're already having trouble just even pushing on to the site so they can take a team fight here but they're going to take one right now. Noxious trying to get on in on this Lucio but it looks like Captain Kook he gets soaks and Noxious gets one right back. There we are one DPS one support down. Squeak is still trying to engage this Arisa but not really having much luck. Yeah good trade but unfortunately gets taken right back as Arisa is able to pick out Noxious just there and with that Saints are down one crime managed to trade it out as he takes out his counterpart there on that sojourn but we can see the Lucio is able to get the boob under Razor that's big source of healing going down there for the side of the Saints Soaks is still just on his way back and it is actually going to be the Kitsune rush committed by the side of Boston and it's going to force him back St. Clair they're really struggling here they don't even have an ult online yet as Razor is only just finally getting that amplification matrix yeah they don't have anything online just yet but in a few short moments they'll have multiple ults online and I think they're going to wait for that moment to strike and probably do a big commit Ooh. to try and just get in here. Noxious almost getting bursted down there. Yeah, Noxious definitely feeling confident in this duel. He's looking for the pick onto the Tracer. In the meantime, Squeak's actually going to take out Virtual Loose there, but oh no! Triforce not quite <laughs> able to make the gap as he's going to fall off and despite picks coming out from both sides, it is going to be St. Clair who's actually able to win this and that was a bit interesting because both the Kiriko and the Sojourn ended up falling 
to their death somehow. So maybe a little bit of, of a drop spaghetti there from the side of Boston. <laughs> but you saying it's good on them for taking advantage of that. And, you know, they managed to win that with only a single ult. So just like that, the ult economy is very even once again. Yeah, a little bit of a misstep there. But they're looking to take a step right back as Noxious is already engaging their backline. And the Risa got one on their backline as well. Crime popping the overclock, getting one, no getting two. Noxious getting a third. And now they're all falling down. Soaks and Crime cleaning up the rest. And another team kill goes over to St. Clair. Yeah, really nicely done there from Crime. You know, whenever he has the overclock, you always got to keep an eye on him because he just makes magic happen. And you know what? I, I do got to give a shout out to Virtual Doge. They're, do they're doing a great job of really pushing forward on the Orisa. Like every fight, it seems like they're finding a pick. So, but Saints are just doing a great job of flipping it around and taking advantage of the fact that because the Orisa is pushing so hard, it leaves the back line a bit vulnerable. Uh, it's leaving back line, but there's the sound barrier into another sound barrier. This is going to be a tanky team fight. Yeah, a nice response sound barrier there from Soaks. The point flip does come through there for the side of Boston, but they are going to try to see if they can, you know, keep this advantage going. Squeak and Crime, though, are going to combine to find two picks, and now Nox is going to be hunting down that Kiriko. She goes low, and Nox is able to find them with the melee. Once again, Saints, they're not having point control quite yet, but they're cleaning up the fight. It's just a couple last stragglers here, and Noxious is going to clean that up. So once again, this fight goes back into the favor of the Saints, but that point cap was important, as now Boston are in last fight territory. Yeah, they are in last fight territory. One more flip, one more team wipe on St. Clair, and Boston will have taken this first point. Squeak on the line right here, trying to keep them all low. They just want to stall out time for as long as possible, but there's Boston going in. Orisa very, very low. And I believe that's another alt about to be charged here. Captain Kugi looking for this pulse bomb, trying to break through St. Clair's oh. line, but no, it's not going to go through as a great <laughs> yeah, Sigma squeak ult. with the Gravitic Flux, a beautiful identifying of the opportunity there as uh, the, the uh, Suzu was actually used by Boston when they pushed in and as soon as he saw that come out he saw the fortify come out waited it and then he just was able to get a huge flux did all the damage he needed and you know winning the fight with just that ult is huge because now St. Clair they still have the pulse bomb they still have the window Boston gonna be forced to push onto this point and we can see Captain Cookie's already getting low he's being hunted down squeak is gonna be able to take down Triforce it's a big source of damage going down now Razor in the back he has the window putting down so much damage onto the point crime can just sit there he is not a care in the world the tracer tries to hunt but Noxious is right there to play bodyguard and Saints with a team kill are going to be able to take this first point. Yeah, they take the first point, but Boston really put up a good fight there, forcing them to that last fight territory. And it was not as one-sided as I was anticipating after all our discussion earlier. I'm excited to see, going into the second point, if Boston will take this one, bring this to a third point. Yeah, but Boston definitely looking very solid. And, you know, it's it's kind of like we talked about that. Orisa comp is just, it is really, there's there's so many opportunities for value. Like with the Kiriko, you have Suzu, you have the Swift Step, which makes you hard to hunt down. The Lucio speed boost makes it so easy for the Orisa to either engage or protect the back line. And the Orisa herself has so many defensive abilities. A Fortify, a Spear Spin, you can use your Javelin, which provides damage and CC. It's, it's so, there's so many things you can do with it. And it is actually going to be Saints trying to take the mirror this time, by the looks of it. Yeah, going for the mirror comp this time, a little bit more consistent into the Orisa, I've found. But right now, Squeak going to have to roll out. Razor is actually going to be sticking with the bat rather than the Kiriko. Yeah, the map I like a lot as well. That mortality field can come in clutch sometimes, especially with how close these team fights can get. No, well, ready. Big engage is going to be coming through there from Virtual Doge, and we can see Butler then take a great advantage of that with two picks coming out. Squeak is able to trade, finds another one actually. Squeak gets two, but Captain Cookie is right there to take him out. A nice job coming in from Boston there. You can see they identified a great opportunity. The speed boost came through. The Debrisa was right there charging forward, and they made the most of it. Soaks was able to get one, but you know, despite picks being traded back and forth, it does look like Boston's going to be able to take control of this point. The Saints are going to try and do everything they can to stop that. As Noxious is actually going to find a pick. Oh, just barely doesn't find the kill on that Tracer, but Grazer does actually in the end get the pick, and now he's keeping his team up, and now this team fight just simply came out of nowhere, and the Saints are pushing them back. Virtual Dodge getting one onto Noxious, but with all his supports down, he can't keep this fight up for long. Yeah, against all odds, Saints are actually going to be able to take first control, despite the fact that Boston, they were the ones who really set the pace. They made the engage there. They just weren't quite able to sustain on the disengage enough. And those picks that Saints were able to find throughout it, they enabled them to come back and 
just like that, now bu busting. They're on the back foot. You can see Razor. He's found two already. He's just not being marked on the high ground at all. The supports for Saints are going off right now. Squeak and Noxious are going to combine. That's another team kill for coming in there. Just a really good job of stopping them on the rotation. Yeah, the Saints seemingly get themselves in such awful scenarios against Boston. But they manage to just come back stronger every single time. And now Boston is in the scenario where they need to cap this point soon as St. Clair is getting a massive lead. But the alt economy is spelling that these next team fights are still going to go St. Clair's way. Yep, both spear spins being committed by the Arisa. Squeak is going to use the Fortify and he's actually going to try and isolate Virtual Doge there. Virtual Doge trying to back up and he looks like he is going to be able to, but he's very low. He needs to be waiting to get healed up. On the other side, we have Captain Cookie on the point, but they're going to get pressured out. Oh, they are going to get chased down. We'll see if they can escape with their lives, but they're being hunted by the Saints. In the meantime, Boston is going to commit the Katsuna Rush onto the high ground, seeing if they can get Valley. Squeak goes very low, but the Impressive Field is going to keep him up. That gets destroyed, though, and Squeak goes down shortly after. Now, the Sound Barrier being committed is going to give Boston the sustain they need to push onto the point. Crime, though, with the overclock, wow. goes in the back line, slides in, finds Soldier, and he's going to be looking to see if he can find another. He is a little bit on his lonesome there. Razor's trying to keep him up, seeing if he can find another. Fortify's been committed, as well as the Spear Spin. This might be an opportunity for Saints to re-engage. You can see Virtual Doge just backing up to the point, seeing if he can stay alive, but it's not going to be enough. His just pushes in, finds the clip. It's going to be a good kill. And now, the rest of Boston, they know they don't have the Arisa. They have to back out. The rest of Saints, they can try and chase us down. The Immortality Field is going to get broken, but there's nothing that the, oh, big the other team can do. Yeah, the Overclock is going to be coming out now from the side of Triforce. We'll see if he can find the same value that Crime did. He's looking for the picks, but the Arisa pushes him. Oh, and a quick pick is going to end to that. Really nice job there coming in from Squeak and Soaks. Now, the rest of Boston, they're going to be looking for something. This fight has been going on for a long time. Neither <laughs> team want to give an inch, but it looks like finally at long last, it is going to be Saints to put their foot down. And now Boston, they're in dire straits. They need a touch. Yeah, they need a touch, and I don't know if they'll be able to. This is going to be close, especially with Soaks cool. with the boop right close by up in the air, taking down. Triforce not going to be able to touch. And that's St. Clair taking a map one at 2-0. Yeah, that last fight, incredibly scrappy, incredibly <laughs> back and forth. And, you know, I think right there, that really demonstrated kind of what the difference between these teams' levels is, right? Like, Saints, they... Even in fights where it kind of seems like they lost, they're so good at trading out in these lost fights that they can regroup quickly and come back in it. And it seems like Boston, they just couldn't get that proper regroup, right? They just couldn't find the chance to, you know, come in as five and really just engage onto a single target properly. And just to comment on that play, uh, we have saw, like you said, they have trouble regrouping sometimes. But even when they do group up, yeah. it seems like Crime just has the overclock ready and then picks off some very important key targets and it all kind of falls apart from there so I gotta give props to some of the TPS's on that team Noxious and Crime were just able to get in there and disrupt their backline in those key team fights and it just went the Saints way every Absolutely, single time. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, Noxious and Crime, like, again, to point out, they're doing a great job of forcing out Suzu early. And once that Suzu comes out, like, the Suzu is a, a very key part when it comes to the Arisa cycling of abilities, right? Like, Arisa is borderline unkillable because you have your Spear Spin, your Fortify, and your Javelin to pressure anyone who tries to engage on the fact that you don't have Spear Spin and Fortify. <laughs> yeah. So... When all those three go, that's when the Suzu comes in to keep that Arisa alive for just a bit longer because if you keep them alive just a bit longer, it's typically enough for them to get those cooldowns back online and then the cycle starts again and you just keep that going. And, it and just you're getting creates, keel botted along the way. Exactly. It just creates, <laughs> like, just, just this raid boss on the field. So you really have to make sure that those supports go down in order to get that Arisa, and Saints are doing a great job of doing that. Now, we do have confirmation that our next map is going to be Eichenwald. Ooh. So we'll have to see what comes into play here. Eichenwald, of course, with that high ground on second, always leads to some interesting stuff being played. Yeah, and of course, that first point seems to the make or break with some teams. You can really tell how the rest of the map is going to go based on the first few moments of that first point. If that first point is not broken into within yep. the first like minute or so then you know this is going to be a very quick map. Yeah, and I, I think there's actually a good chance. Like, we did pretty much see the meta comp there uh, on Nepal, especially there on Nepal Village. Uh, the only really difference that we saw was the Baptiste, but I think Saints, they still played it very well. They still made great use of the Baptiste. The Immortality Field, while not being quite as impactful as Suzu, you know, you don't get that cleanse or anything, uh, it's, still it's still right up there, right? 
and if if a team fails or even if it just distracts a team you know they need to kind of pay attention to destroy it that can buy you just a little bit of time and sometimes that's all you need exactly and once again squeak opting for the sigma pick and noxious Seemingly picking the Hanzo, which is also an interesting pick. Just yeah, so you know, I kind of said we might see some weird stuff, but this is this is Boston weirder than also. I thought. The the Bastion Genji or Sojourn Genji. This is a comp that I've seen before. Actually, it was being run by Sheer Cold, which was the team Soaks played on in Overwatch Champion Series. <laughs> so. Uh, in, in a funny way, if anyone knows how this comp works and how to play against it, it's going to be Saints, thanks to the knowledge that Soaks is going to have. Exactly, but it looks like it's working pretty well. The speed boost just gets them out in on this point, forcing the team fight already. They just need to look for a pick very quickly. Squeak stunning up this Jungle Queen, but they're being kept up by all of these heals. But Crime finding one, Noxious finding another. This fight is turning for the worst for Bo Boston, but they find one orbit to be able to take out the Hanzo, but that's not going to oh. be enough. Yeah. This Queen is actually staying alive somehow and able to get out yeah the queen is definitely like a really key part there but you know the rest of the team like the queen is it's basically a third dps right you are a little tanky but it's it's a large part just due to like how small your hitbox is and the fact that you have the shout but it, it really just kind of functions like a tps the queen gets kills it doesn't like it doesn't push the team away like an Arisa does. It doesn't allow you to kind of just stand stalwart on the point with your fortify. It is all about damage and finding picks. So if if Saints, if they just like find the picks, and which is exactly what we're going to see here, is that three-man flux comes in for Squeak. Team is not going to be able to find the picks, but Crash has to say that Crime is going to take out the Kiriko. A huge source of healing being gone. Virtual Dojo, ooh, the lamp just a little too late to save Squeak. He's going to find the pick. Noxious, though, comes around the corner, finds a quick pick. He's going to be hunting the Genji now. Goes super low. Virtual Dojo staying alive does find another pick. So so with the spawn advantage, this might give Boston a chance. It's actually going to be the Junker Queen still looking to rush forward onto the point. And they are going to back out now, just barely getting out with their life. Yeah, and they still haven't gotten any progression on A. They haven't gotten a single tick even after all of these teamfights and all this time on the point. Saints keeping this competitive. And now Boston really needs to try and get some of these key picks in here. They get them low once again, but it's not going to be enough. There is the Kitsune rush committed from Boston. Oh. Yeah, the Kitsune rush gets used, but Crime with the overclock is just going to take out Virtual Doge as, you know, that's just a shooting gallery for him as they're all running along the path <laughs> there. And Squeak, he's on point now. A couple members of Boston left, but, you know, they're not going to be able to do much. As, yeah, Orbit's just going to jump off the map to reset. And uh, it was actually, there was a B use there for the side of Boston as well. I didn't even see that come Jeez. out. Yeah, that is going to be a very expensive beat with a little return, and now they have to walk through a window and potentially be to their own if things go sour for the Saints. Oh. But Noxious finding that pick is going to be rough. Yeah, at this point, Boston, they're probably going to look to try and combo the uh, Blade with the Junker Queen ult, or... More likely, actually, they're probably going to use the Dark Queen all to try and force the beat. Once the beat gets forced, then they can have Captain Cookie go in with that blade and look to find value, especially on that Hanzo, as he's going to be the most vulnerable target there on the side of the Saints. So we'll have to see what happens. It looks like they're lining up for it, probably seeing if they can wait out lamp being used, but it's actually going to be a window being used. And uh, the blade is going to be the first thing to come out. The beat is a little late. Crime is going to get taken out. And we'll see if Soaks can live here. He's going to get taken out as well. The beat not quite finding the value it needed to. And it looks like this is the opening that Boston needed, as the Rampage was also able to find value. Now Razor's going to hunt down with the Genji. He actually wins that matchup. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and now Crime going on the Pharah just to try and find any low stragglers, but it's not going to happen. And I don't think any contest is going to happen here as there's not enough time for this. Or maybe that was an interesting decision. Maybe just going back Yeah, with probably the team. just getting a quick reset. But yeah, I, I really like the way Boston played that. You know, the window came out and that could have ended very badly for Boston. But the Genji Blade going like on the flank before the window had the chance to really start getting value. It was able to find the quick pick. Oh, that's huge. Didn't get anything. A huge flux is going to be coming out. Squeak has to back out to stay alive. Wow. The damage is done. He just flies <laughs> right back in, and they are all thrown to bits on the floor. That's not a complete team wipe, but it might as well be as is just Triforce remaining. Soaks yeah. picking up the Genji as well. And now we do see the cast coming in. So this is a little bit more of what I expected to see. The Hanzo is still a bit of a wild card, but the, the, the cast, I do think it makes a lot of sense, especially against that Genji. You can use the Magnate to just really shut down a lot of the Genji's value. Value, and if nothing else, at least force the deep fight. But Saints with a very aggressive hold here. The dragon is going to split off the queen. Squeak is looking to focus him down with the rock, trying to keep Razor alive as he goes low. And it is going to be not quite successful as Triforce on the other angle is able to take him out. Not
Noxious trades with the pick on to the Genji, and we'll see if Boston can make anything happen with that. The spawn advantage is going to be good for them as they get Noxious low, and they are able to take him out. Now Squeak, he's going to have to try and back out, but the Queen is running him down. They have the speed boost, they have the shout, and he's not going to be able to get out. A nice, clean fight win there from Boston. Yeah, now with the momentum, Boston is just keep on keeping on on this payload. They're making some good progress here, and they're feeling very oh, confident. They're, they're pushing the all the way up. They might even be able to stagger crime here as he gets low. The knife pull is going to be good. That's two picks from Virtual Doge. Beautiful staggers, as this is going to get them a lot of free cart space and potentially even get them past that high ground, which can be so valuable for the defenders. Exactly. Now I'm beginning to feel that this Hanzo is losing out on some value here. It's struggling to find picks right now without the range, but I think it might open up once again once we're on this bridge. This is the dangerous choke. This is where St. Clair need to stop them in their tracks. Yep. There's only a minute Ooh. left. There's the Gravitic Flux there from Squeak getting one. Looking for another. Can't quite find it. Trying to get this Queen off his back line. Not going to get it, though, as Noctis finds one. Looking for another. Kirko very, very low, and so is a soldier, and they manage to do it as they wipe three of them, all of them, off the map. Yeah, a really nice Kitsune rush there from Boston, but Squeak with an even nicer Flux. You throw that Flux down right on top of the Kitsune, and all of a sudden, guess what? You can't play in it. Otherwise, you're going to get lifted to high heavens. And now with 30 seconds remaining, Boston has to make one last blitz for this payload. They need to send this into an overtime, and they very well might. They're going to go for the inside castle oh, round. There's the dragon, dragon as well, and the stun gets two with Grime and Squeak and Noxious. Yeah, a nice rotation from Boston, but they might have actually made a critical error here as they didn't quite, they needed to mark that Hanzo ultimate. When you're pushing through an enclosed space like that, you have to be aware of dragons. And, you know, the dragons did exactly what we expected. It just completely shuts them down. They can't even touch at this point. And, yeah, that is going to wow. be where the cart stops. The Saints, they just, you know, once the dragons came out, they were just like, yeah, we'll just go up to their spawn. <laughs> we'll make sure they don't have any chance of getting past this. Yeah, and now the Saints very well could win this. It is definitely within arm's reach, but still a good progression on the side of Boston. They did not do a bad job at all pushing this card, but not getting that second checkpoint, not pushing it that much further is really going to put it right in front of the Saints. They don't have very far at all to push it. Yeah, I, I got to say, though, I do wonder if we'd, what, if we'd be seeing a different result here after that first round, if Boston had just kind of stuck with the comp that was working for them. Like, they looked pretty solid on that Orisa comp. Definitely. N maybe not quite so much on the second point, but that first point, it was very competitive thanks to that Orisa comp. And, you know, that first point we saw on Nepal, that was them playing the Orisa into the Sigma, which is, you know, kind of what was kind of just happening. And it looks like Boston, yeah, now they've decided that they're just going to stick with what they know not trying to get too fancy with it. And I think that's a good decision because, you know, there's a reason, like, like I said, I've seen the Junker Queen comp get played by Solx's team. That's the only time I've seen it get played. Yep. <laughs> there's a reason for that. <laughs> For sure, and once again, Squeak going for the Sigma seems to be his comfort pick for today. Crime on the Echo as well. They're going to go for a very interesting comp, and the Hanzo pick as well. Hanzo on attack I like even less, just because it's harder to get the lineups perfectly. Oh, we're going to be seeing a jump shot coming out here from Noxious. Crime as well, seeing if they can get some early scouting information over the top of this building. Looks like Noxious actually did hit a shot. It looks like he might actually be sticking with it. And yeah, they're actually going to be running the Widowmaker Echo. So they're going to need to be careful, though, because Triforce, what he can do, and yeah, Captain Cookie as well, he can just put so much pressure onto the Widow. And Triforce, he can look to charge up rails off the Sigma Shield and then just kind of take down Crime when he decides to peek. So we can see a lot of members of Saints right now being distracted by Captain Cookie and the Lucio going to the back line as well. Racer being taken low by some poke damage. Crime, he's going to see if he can get a pick, but not quite, as it is Noxious with an insane shot onto Captain Cookie. That was actually unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> but Crime is right there to follow up. So now two down for the side of Boston. Versus St. Clair, they're starting to push on to point. The Orisa is still alive, and it is going to be a threat. And Triforce is actually going to be able to pick up Soaks as well. So now this fight going much more even. The Suzu is going to come out. It's going to keep that Orisa alive a little bit longer, but Squeak is going to try and chase him down. Virtual Doge going so low. You can see Orbit trying to keep him alive to the best of their abilities, but is it going to be enough? They're probably going to give up a tick here. And Squeak, maybe he pushed a little bit too far forward, but no, Noxious and Crime are right there to back him up, as well as the Lamp. They're 
are going to find picks and stay alive. That's all they need. That's going to be a point flip coming through for sure. And already doing uh, so much better on time than Boss and a team killed the boot. They just completely wiped Whoa. out Boss. And now with so much time left on the board, a full five minutes just to push it, not even to the first check. Oh, I was going to say, we're going to have a Widow duel coming in, but Noxious, he wants none of that. He is just going to sit that down as fast as he can. He's already on the high ground position, looking to see if he can find that Orisa, putting down some pressure. Like you can see, this is just such a great angle. Now Squeak in the back line, just going to use the flux as well onto the Sojourn. Like Saints, they're just all about these solo picks right now because that's really all they need. As long as they keep finding these solo picks, there's nothing that Boston can do. It looks like the Susu is going to be baby enough to take out Squeak and the Soxie's just chilling on car. But as, as wow. he's going low, Crime is right there, finds two, Noxious makes a third, and now Virtual Doge, he's going to be trying to stay alive, maybe find something, but there's nothing that can be done. As Saints, they have yet to be contested. No, they haven't even, this car has not stopped moving since it has started. And now Crime and the rest of the Saints are just Ooh, keeping Boston in now. here. And we're seeing the Doomfist switch. Oh, uh, Captain Cookie is actually going to open this up with a pick onto Soak. So this is the opportunity that Boston needs. Squeak, he was there, there, but you know that Arisa is a big threat to the Doomfist. So he's going to have to back out. Crime is going to be able to take out Triforce. The Katuna rush on point. No one is there to make use of it though, as all of Boston seems to have kited back, and uh, they are maybe going to be able to get this fight win. But it is, it is messy, and it is looking like Saints. They are finally going to be pressured out. We can see the Lucio looking for Noxious moving him farther in. Neither team really wanting to back out entirely quite yet, but it does seem like Boston, they are in control. They have the high ground as Saints. Now we might either see a swap or they're just going to try and maybe see if they can build up that Echo Copy to just kind of push in all the way. Yeah, I think that's what they're looking for here. Soaks just doing a little bit of chip damage, trying to get a little thorn in the side. Soaks is actually up. going on a flank. He's looking wow. for the Widow. He's he, solo, he's solo he's trying to the Widow. He gets her. <laughs> Soaks the absolute doing? madman. Oh my gosh, he's trying to open this up for his team as they only need to push it just a little bit further to answer with a soundbar of their own. They have nothing to answer oh. for it, but this Doomfist is just going to be so dang annoying. Soaks getting the window once again, Crime getting one as well. Razor going crazy here with the window. The solo supports are wiping out Boston and that is the game winning play. Yeah, Soaks just decided he was gonna, <laughs> he just decided it was his time to shine. He needed the Reddit clips. <laughs> True. He decided he needed a hero and he is his own. And there it is, Noxious getting play of the game. This must be that dragon indoors, no? Uh, it looks like it's actually gonna be the follow up. Ooh, look at those headshots onto the queen, taking them so low. Gonna find the Kiriko as well. Oh, uh, gonna try to. Uh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Messy play, but it's play nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> but wow, what an amazing game. That was very exciting. Very close on the Saints sides yeah. near the end. Just some crazy plays came I, out I, I got to say, though, like, you know, when, when you see your Lucio start doing stuff like that, it, it definitely speaks to uh, a level of comfort that the Saints definitely. have to be able to make those kind of plays, right? So Saints, you know, the first map, after the first map, we were like, maybe this is going to be closer than we expected. Second map, though, the Saints just... They they were in complete control that entire time. Like, yeah, they gave up the first point, but I don't think they were ever actually worried about losing. Yeah, no. Uh, you usually don't worry that much giving up the first point, especially on these payload maps. You just usually are comfortable losing it. You kind of expect it. You just want to burn as much time as you can, and that's what they did. They left them with, yep. I think, no time at all. I think they got it like close to OT, if not in OT. And the Saints got that first point with five minutes to spare. They had all the time in the world. Like, even if that Lucio crazy play didn't work out, if it went horribly wrong, everyone lost their ults. They had so much time left on the board. I think they still had, like, nearly four minutes left. They could have got them all back yeah. and then played a little bit more smartly. Yeah, and and it wasn't even a bad attempt by Boston. It was just, like, some, some little key errors when it came to, like, your ult tracking and even, like, some abilities being hit. Like, when we saw Squeak dive in there at the end, you could see he was able to get out because the, the spear didn't quite hit and uh, the spear spin didn't quite able to it wasn't quite able to like isolate him so he was just able to get in and out for free and it's just like it's little stuff like that right that's what you really need to be seeing now as we go to our third map push the, either the beginning of reverse sweep or where it all ends we'll have to see uh it is sweet going to be on zarya actually and we're going to be seeing the widow duel again but not by noxious this time if crime wants his his time <laughs> in the spotlight yeah it looks like crime is going to hop on the widow a little bit of a swap there we're also seeing the ana on a razor and soaks on the brig 
interesting pick. Ooh. Butler actually doing a little bit of a pick from the Saints last game. Yeah, Butler going to be trying to kind of, you know, learn learn from the best here. And the, the key difference here we see here is the uh, Ilyari. So they're going to have potentially a lot more range damage. Well, especially when you look at that Zarya. But, you know, well, that's one way to put an end to that is Noctis just goes around on a flank, takes out the healing pylon and the Ilyari themselves. So that's a source of healing down already. Now, Butler, they are, or Boss, they're left with just the Baptiste. And we'll see if it's enough. Virtual Doge is going to be able to take out Soak. So, you know, healing kind of going even here, but a nice nade getting thrown down is going to be enough for Squeak to push forward and finish that. As, you know, Saints again looking very comfortable. And they are more than happy to push up and look for these staggers. That's something Saints has been doing great all series. It's like, when, Bo when Boston wants to back out, Saints just does not let them. They drag them back. <laughs> exactly. They just force the fight every time. And look <laughs> at that. Picks Even are still coming through. <laughs> they're just g getting the long range pi picks right oh! out of spawn. And the, that just, would have been a pick if not for the fall off. That was insane. Just a little bit too far range. And he, you can see he's already stepping up. He doesn't want that to happen again. Ooh, Ooh and you back though. Yeah, Captain Cookie, he wants to put an end to Crime's reign of terror here up on the high ground. He's just been finding pick after pick. Uh, but he, look at this. Saints are about to get checkpoint here. No contest comes through. They have now reached checkpoint without being stopped even once. But Austin, in the meantime, they have swapped over to the Zarya, seeing if they can kind of equalize a little bit. And Orbit is going to take out Soak. So spawn advantage, some picks coming through. This might be their time. But Crime, he finds <laughs> two. Even despite the fact that Boston had the window advantage, they're just able to find the picks. And Saints, they're still not being stopped. Yeah, they're not being stopped. They haven't been stopped a single time yet, but now Virtual Doge finally getting well, squeaked down. Still there. If Crime takes this area, this could oh, be game right here, but is. no. Captain Cookie answers and stops the Saints in those tracks, but they're like almost at 80% through this map already. Yeah, hitting a 100 meters to zero, that is, that's... It's a little bit of a stomp. Squeak is actually going to be going over to the Winston now. And Noxious, uh, a late death that might make the Saints kind of play a little bit slower. But as I say that, Squeak, it looks like he has no interest in playing slow. He is going right back to the car, already contesting. Crime, he's looking for an off angle. They do get found. Soaks, he is going to be able to get out here. Now the Nano coming through onto Squeak. Racer is going to be using that. He goes in. The Lamp coming out is going to keep Triforce alive for a little bit. But Squeak is looking to chase it down. In the meantime, Crime is actually able to take out the Baptiste. So again, just the Ilyari heals. Squeak, though, he is going to back up, and Captain Cookie is going to take out Razor. So, despite the Nano coming through, a nice kind of re-engage from wow. Boston. Ooh, a nice pick from Captain Cookie as well. Noxious is staying alive here, but Boston, they should have the numbers they need. The bubble coming out is going to keep Cookie alive for a little bit longer, but th in the meantime, Squeak is still alive. They just re-engaged. They're finding picks. Triforce has kind of snuck the bot away from them here, but Saints, they quickly jump back on. Yeah, but by the time this bot is back over near Boston side, they're going to be ready to take another team fight. The Saints pushing up once again. The copy's almost ready for Noxious as well. This next team fight is going to be key. If this bot gets too close and then they lose, that could very well be, be game oh, already. Prime got a little too greedy there in Virtual Doge with the punish. And now Captain Cookie looking for these snipes. Just up, barely does not take out this Echo. They're actually still committing to this fight. Yeah, Triver is actually going to be on the Torbjorn now, and it looks like it's going to find some well, some good value right off the bat. Squeak ends up going down to it. Now we do have Noxious with the copy onto the Yari. Not sure where he is, though. He's just going to back out and eventually get taken out. Yeah, so Saints so maybe a little bit overambitious there as they had lost crime right at the beginning of that fight. But, you know, well done to Boston to be able to kind of capitalize on that. Yeah, definitely. And now they're still in oh. this. They can still close the gap here, but it's still it's oh. going to be a hard button to crime. Getting the Torb out of the gate is going to be nasty. And, and Squeak is on the enemy side. He's looking for picks. Found the Ilyari already. He is going to get out. You know, he knows he found the value, so he can just back out, kind of get more value. The Torbjorn is a little bit isolated. They're going to take advantage of this by the looks of it to just push up, keep taking space, as Razor is actually going to be willing to take out the Torbjorn. Pushing forward with those silent footsteps on the flank. The bubble beam being used by the Zarya now. That's going to be a huge green light for the Saints as they push in. The window needs to be committed, as well as the lamp. The grab is going to be enough to take out Squeak, but is it going to be enough for Boston to be able to win the fight as the cart is still moving here? 
Vanguard still moving. The Saints are not letting up on the gas. They just want to keep going on this bot. But now it's finally, it's still going to be contested. As I'm saying, things are going to change. But no, they do not. Crime trying to get the snipes out on the Zilari, but he's not going to find it. Now, bot's finally going to go. Never mind. It's contested once again. We're seeing a few picks go out for Boston once again and again. This is like the never ending fight. People are just funneling in oh. here. But Triforce picking out Crime might be the thing that breaks the camel's back here. Yeah, nice shot from Triforce there. Able to dink Crime with the Cheetos. Uh, Squeak is going to be off the monkey on the Wrecking Ball now. Probably just swap to it to get back to a point fast. But with how Saints have been doing so far, there's no reason why he can't just stick on this. Like the level of confidence I'm sure he has is like right now they are just extremely, extremely comfortable. Boston have yet to even make them sweat by the looks of it. As they might only just now for the first time this game get past zero meters. But as I say that, Saints are going to be right there to stop that from happening. Exactly. They're already stopping it at this halfway point. Still keeping this at zero meters. I think that's the goal now. They don't want to fit, win the game. They just want to make sure it's there's no progress. Crime finds one though. Squeak going in as well. Trying to take out this Zarya. There's the Molten Core. We see Noxious go in and get the knock up. And there's the Torb. There's the tank. And there is going to be the support. But no, they find one on the exit. And this alert staying up. But gets taken up by Squeak. And Razor gets the Widow. Yeah, a couple picks on the exit. But unfortunately, at this point, it's more of a consolation prize. As Saints have just been uh, unstoppable. Crime is finding pick after pick in every fight. Soaks is actually going to be swapping off the break onto the Ana now. So, but like, th this comp, like, if you're a new player to Overwatch, don't bother looking at this comp. Don't see don't Razor <laughs> yeah. on the back line. Razor, he's... Saints at this point, they're, they're just kind of flexing at this. Because, I mean, they have a lead of 120 meters to zero. They could lose like, the entire rest of the game and still have a chance to win it at the last minute. Exactly, crime finding two out of the gate. That's gonna open up the Saints once again to just move in. Noxious switching up on the Reaper. Yeah, Razor is just gonna be using Transcend. It's a movement ability for him. He exactly. doesn't need it to heal. It's it's all it is is increased movement speed. This needs to catch up with the team, you know? You get that harmony or this is a real healing. And now Noxious finding one on the Malga. Boston just struggling to get in this here. There's the Death Blossom. That might be what they need to open this up, but he's anti He's kind of getting very low. There's Triforce getting the pick. <laughs> Look at Razor. He's just all the way in the front line. He's he's gone past his tank multiple times. Yeah, and the Saints don't want to push this bot any further. They want to try and keep it back here. And there is the Hammond ult as well, trying oh. to keep things interesting here. Stop the push, yeah. but it gets taken out. Yeah, the Malga doing a great like that. That's why you run the Malga, right? When you're against like a Winston, when you're against a Ball, when you're against a Reinhardt. There's really nothing to stop you from just turning those guys into Swiss cheese, and that's exactly what Boston realized. Uh, Squeak is actually going to decide to take the Malga Mirror. I thought we were kind of past this, but I guess not. We're doing a throwback to the first couple weeks of Season 9. <laughs> and the Crime and Soak. Razor actually on the Lucio. He, I didn't even realize he went to the Lucio. He's trying to do his best Soak's impression, but not kind of and quite as well for him. No, oh, and they still have zero meters left on the. They still have zero meters on the board. The Saints don't want to give up a single meter, but now it At looks like it's going to happen. At long last, whether it was... Oh, Captain Cookie. All right. We do have to point out that Captain Cookie, he found like three picks that fight, all headshots. So while, yeah, Razor, he did get a he did get a little bit creative, we'll say. Uh, huge props to Captain Cookie for being able to find the picks that he needed to on that Widowmaker and being the huge reason why Boston are not going to be ending this map with zero meters on the board. Yeah, for sure. And now, with about a minute left on the board, Boston still has enough time to equalize this as long as they keep winning these team fights. And with Squeak getting antied, he's going to go down in no time at all. And it's going to be Triforce committing the ult also on the Malga. Crime finding one, looking for another. The Malga slept. He pick off the back line while he's down, but he's not going to stay down for long because he's already back in this. We see Virtual Doge focusing in on this Ana. Malga is antied. This is the time to strike, but but it's not gonna work out as now Boston is just shredding the Saints. They're filing in one by one. They're just going for the contest at this point. Yeah, Boston seems to have finally found something that works for them. That Malga is paying off in dividends. And Captain Cookie, he is just hitting another level with the picks he is finding. Squeak gets anti, he goes so low. He's gonna try to get out, but he's caught between a rock and a hard place as members of Boston are on both sides. They're gonna take him out. And Boston, they might even be able to capture the checkpoint here. But you know, it, it's kind of like we alluded to earlier. Saints, they got so much 
much card progress early on that even after a, such a huge comeback from Boston, it might not matter as we start going into overtime here. Yeah, but we could very well be in overtime for a while if oh, somehow Boston noxious. gets... He's going to find two oh, picks. No. Squeak comes back on the Reinhardt. Virtual Doge on the cart. He is going to have the cage fight, which might give them an opportunity to be able to keep this going. But as I say that, the rest of Boston falls. He's the only one left. 100 HP left. He is not going to be long for this world. Saints making that last map look easy. Yeah, they had an amazing run that last or that last map and props to them. They just had some fun there at the end with those swaps. We got to see him most of the usual picks, all the comfort picks, all the favorites, and we got to see some amazing widow action on both sides. Yeah, I'm willing to bet this is yeah, this is oh it's actually yeah, it's this is gonna be the fight where where they finally started getting the bot moving for the first time. You can see the pick on a crime there was nice and then another nice pick onto Soaks. Like, that's, what, that's what you need to be seeing from your Widow, right? So while Saints are going to be the ones to take this game, 3-0, Boston, I think they did impress us. Yo, yeah, for sure. This is not a game on paper that we thought was going to be that close, especially on that first point. Things were very, very dicey. I think if the momentum swung the other way, if they got even a point or two, if they took that first map, I think things would have been a different story. As you could tell, they're starting to wake up near the end, trying to get into the momentum. But... It just didn't happen quick enough for them. Yeah. And unfortunately, the Saints took it 3-0. The Saints were just having a great time all yeah. the way through. And, you know, one thing you have to mention is the Saints, it kind of seemed like they were just getting better throughout this year. Yes. Right? Like, you know, first point, first map, uh, it kind of seemed like it could go either way. Second point, first map. Yeah, that was kind of just that. That was definitely Saints' favorite. You know, Boston. Mm -hmm. They they looked like they could have brought it back at times, but Saints were definitely in control. Going on to that second map. That was kind yeah, of just, was... you know, Saints, it, it was a little bit close to times, like, you know, Boston were able to get a point, but it was definitely all Saints, and, you know, by the end of it, they were kind of starting to do some wacky stuff, and then the third map, Saints, they were just, they were just playing with their food. Yeah, definitely near the end, they, I think they were even shocked themselves, they were like, are we really gonna push this uncontested all the way yeah. to their doorstep, and then once they got it there, they are like, we can just keep running in, keep filing in, as long as we contest the bot, Time yeah. after time, we don't even have to push this any further. We pretty much have this in the bag, and they, they got it, and they deserve this series win. But, you know, with how much Boston surprised us, I'm actually going to look forward to this University of Missouri game against Mizzo. It's looking to be kind of dicey, I think. Unless they keep riding this high from the series win, things could look very different yeah we are going to toss it to a short break before that game but it's definitely going to be something to keep an eye on you know saints they're coming in with you know a little bit of a warm-up and you know we don't know the results of mizzou's game but we know that they are just coming off a game as well so both teams hoping to see them come in hot exactly and with all that being said we're gonna see you again at i believe 3:30 for our next overwatch game and we'll see you soon